Hello and welcome to the Ten Commandments of Effective Lifeguarding, presented by West Bend. The aquatic safety experts at West Bend designed the Ten Commandments of Effective Lifeguarding as a one-stop resource for lifeguards and aquatic directors across the country. You can visit our website at cultureofsafety.com for a more in-depth analysis of each of these commandments. In this clip, we'll be focusing on the Tenth Lifeguard Commandment. A good lifeguard knows that they need to scan the entire pool because distressed swimmers don't always splash around on the surface of the water. We've designed a quick activity to emphasize what all lifeguards already know. Surveillance is hard work. Over the next 10 seconds, these 12 swimmers will bounce around the screen. Some of them will go underwater so you may see them fade from view for a bit, while others may leave the screen altogether. What you need to do is keep an eye on all of them, and at the end of 10 seconds, you need to be able to say whether or not any of the swimmers are missing. Here we go. That was difficult, wasn't it? Do you know if any swimmers are missing? And if so, how many? There are 11 swimmers left, but you would actually be wrong if you said only one swimmer was missing. Let's replay this demonstration, but this time, the swimmers will be numbered. So you'll notice that swimmer number two is no longer within view. But did you notice that a 13th swimmer entered the water? There are actually two swimmers missing. You probably didn't catch this the first time you watched, and that's to be expected. We chose that particular demonstration for two reasons. First, as we've already mentioned, we wanted to emphasize that surveillance is really hard work. And more importantly, we wanted to emphasize that trying to count individual swimmers is an ineffective way to scan the pool. Anytime a new swimmer enters the water, or when a swimmer goes beneath the surface, your counts will be affected. So the best way to recognize swimmers in distress is to scan the bottom of the pool first and then move up to the surface of the water rather than trying to count swimmers. After all, a passive drowning victim at the bottom of the pool is far more likely to be in serious danger than an active drowning victim at the surface. A good lifeguard will be able to scan the pool bottom and the water surface in their zone of coverage in less than 10 seconds. In order to successfully scan the pool from bottom to top, it's necessary to actually be able to see the bottom of the pool. This is often much easier said than done. The bottom of the pool can be difficult to see for several reasons, including glare, poor water chemistry, and even wind disturbing the surface of the water. Dealing with glare and wind may be a matter of simply adjusting an umbrella or changing positions. Issues like cloudy water, however, may require you to clear the pool until the problem can be fixed. Surveillance is hard work, but a good lifeguard knows that a distressed swimmer relies on their ability to spot a dangerous situation almost immediately. By scanning the bottom of the pool first, a lifeguard can prevent drownings and quickly spot unconscious swimmers. For more information on the Ten Commandments of Effective Lifeguarding, visit West Bend at cultureofsafety.com. We also encourage you to connect with us by searching for Culture of Safety on Facebook and Safety underscore West Bend on Twitter.